in a criminal justice system. Games that have flown under the radar are considered especially heinous. In upstate New York, the dedicated reviewers are a part of an elite squad known as the Ponzi Gaming Unit. These are their stories. I don't wanna know, baby. I don't wanna know. to the channel. It's good to see you all. I apologize. I'm just getting over the flu. I still technically have it, so I'm not 100% yet. My voice might sound a little shaky in this video that you're going to be watching, but today we are talking about Kona. Really under the radar. We're not talking about the car. We're talking about the video game. So without further ado, let's get right into it. I had never heard about Kona until I obtained the game through Humble Bundle. And if I had to take a guess, many of you more than likely have also not heard of it as well. Especially seeing as how Kona is actually a type of car. This game isn't a car though, I promise. Or even about cars for that matter. Is not car is video game. Genius! This game can easily get buried in your Steam library as it launched in 2017 and has been out for almost three years now. It frequently goes on sale though, so you might find it for just a couple dollars. Right from the start, I do not recommend buying this game for full value. Buy it on sale or through the Humble Store when it's on sale there. This game is too short to justify the full MSRP in my opinion. Short. <laughs> he admitted it. And something else in the essence of this game being short, there were loading sequences going from parts of the open world. It's like walking through the wilderness of Skyrim and then suddenly having to stop because the wilderness needs more time to load as you continue. Stop! He's already dead! I'm fine with having loading scenes, but if you're gonna have loading scenes and break the immersion, there needs to be some sort of cutaway or some sort of like title screen or tile or something to that effect. My dog is really getting in the way of this recording right now. And if you're gonna have those things, then it's totally fine because then I don't have to break the immersion. I can be like, oh, okay, the game's loading. No, don't just pause me in the middle and force me. Like, I don't wanna watch my truck suddenly stop driving because I'm at a loading scene. That's just uh, inexcusable, I, I, I can't. It, it breaks the immersion. And the whole point of this game is to be immersed into where you're at! Now, although rather short, without the use of a guide, you can spend many hours wandering this frozen tundra known as Nord du Quebec. This game, as stated, takes place in Canada in the 1970s. And if you're not from the area, the French-speaking part at that. Canadians are weird! Kudos to the game developers, though, for translating a smaller, kick-started video game title into English. Although, the NPCs still speak French, but at least we get the English subtitles. I do feel as though the French-speaking NPCs, however, really add to the feel of this game. Kona on PC is a small open world adventure mystery game with a very chilling undertone. It's funny because it's snowing! The atmosphere of this game does an excellent job of setting the tone for what the player is in store for. The beautiful snow, the crunch of your feet as you walk, the wind blowing, the trees rustling, the wolves running. You can physically feel the cold and the chill in the air. Your footsteps even last long enough to retrace them if you end up getting lost in the tundra. This game's main appeal has to come from solely the atmosphere around us. Whether you're getting shot by the only villager who's left in town and then trading him special booze for a coat, or unmasking the steps that the victims had taken before they died, the many puzzles and little challenges that the game presents do a solid job of setting the tone in the game. Our mission, should we choose to accept it, I accept! The joke's funny because your name is Carl. Is to unravel what exactly has happened in this small town. We follow Carl Fulbert, if I'm saying that correctly. Hi Carl! Is that all you came to say? Are we, uh, we done here? A veteran turned private investigator who was called in to do some detective work regarding issues of vandalism and theft in the area. Granted, although we play in first person, there is a narrator who narrates Carl's thoughts and actions. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. Wait a second, that's not quite right. Someone had been playing with a crossbow here. A very dangerous game. Oh, that's much better. Carl never speaks. Love his voice, though. He really does a great job setting the mood to the story. He also informs the player if you get too cold. Now, because of the unnatural storm that has fallen on Nord du Quebec, we continually have to monitor Carl's warmth meter, as well as his sanity meter. The colder he gets, the less he can run, the less accurate he is with using an item, and the foggier our vision gets while driving or moving. Get too cold and you'll die from hypothermia. While monitoring all this, we have to be careful about the wolves that are in the area as well. 
angering them or getting too close to them, they might attack Carl. Now, the game does give you some consumables to help combat all of these status issues, from constantly finding fire starters and matches, and fire pits to stay warm as you travel, to cigarettes and alcohol to help ease his mind. Those are terrible habits to stay calm. I'm calm! But it's the 70s. Overall, this game is very beautiful in execution. It's not a horror game by any means, but you will continually have a creeping feeling as you play, never knowing what to expect behind the corner of every wall, nook, and cranny. The music does a perfect job of creating a creepy atmosphere. To jump into the story, let me just say, spoilers ahead. From the start of this game, Carl realizes that something is terribly wrong in the town. What's going on here? Something doesn't add up. Upon arrival, the main gate that leads to town is locked, and we end up having to use wire cutters to break the padlock off of the gate. Once in, eventually, some person trying to escape the city as fast as possible crashes into us, and we have to get our car pulled out of a ditch after doing some minor detective work around the scene of the crime. The game kicks off once you stop at the local gas station and find the man who called you for the job was shot dead on arrival. While Carl is doing his detective work, he slips into some sort of spiritual visions that give him details as to what happened. Honestly, I wouldn't hire him either, guys, but he's our man. Yes! Each vision that Carl has in the game are the keys to the actual story elements in Kona. After doing some puzzles and wandering around the wasteland or the tundra, whatever you'd like to call it, you encounter a total of four people that are encased entirely in ice, dead. You can learn about each of those people individually through the areas that you find them in. However, the game really only puts emphasis on the doctor. The doctor, you see, his wife passed away from some sort of disease that he couldn't cure, if I understand the plot correctly. Eventually, he takes kindly to a young woman in town. Well, the four people that you find in Case and Ice are the same four people that killed that woman that he was fond of in a hunting accident. Sorry, I thought you were a deer. And rather than report it, they buried her, hid the body, etc. I mean, you've probably seen a million murder mysteries. It's the most cliche plot that you could possibly have. After solving all there is to know about the doctor. I'm the doctor. You come across an ice wall and have a vision where you see all four people that have passed away breaking through the ice wall into the forest. You decide to follow their path. After coming across two more dead bodies, you finally come across the Wendigo? 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 I don't know how to say it. The ice spirit that is responsible for the killings. However, it's actually the doctor. <laughs> He turned into the spirit to avenge the death of the young woman whom he took in for some reason. I tried to kill him, but he doesn't die from bullets, so you just have to run. Finally, you outrun him, find a boat, then get taken in by the Coast Guard after escaping. That's it. Honestly, the game seems shorter than it actually is, but the puzzles that you have to solve in order to get to this conclusion is, is what will take you multiple hours. People will be like, why is it called puzzles? That's the puzzle. But honestly, you can beat this game within three to four hours' time. Listen, guys, maybe it's because I have flu brain, but I really felt like the story was grasping at straws here. I'm not quite sure I followed it. I could do some more playthroughs to understand it better, but to be frank, it's just not worth it to me. They didn't really draw me in. I like what they were trying to do. Story-driven psychological thrillers are my jam, but they just really overextended here too far, I think. This game does a great job setting everything up, and the atmosphere is to die for, but the conclusion really just didn't wow hmm. and that's unfortunate because there's a lot of potential supposedly this is just episode one of four the developers have said that they're going to end up making three sequels to this game but nothing's been made so i guess we'll just have to wait to see what's in store if they're ever made or we're left hanging and a lot of this game's story elements also come from the documents and such that you find around all the victims but because they don't place enough emphasis on each victim you don't really feel connected to them you don't feel close to them you're not even really sure who they are the most person that they give you the most detail about didn't even die, and that's the doctor. I'm the doctor, by the way. So I'm not really sure why they went this direction. They probably could have fit a lot more meat into the story, but nonetheless, this is what we got left with, so we're just gonna have to deal with it. I do still recommend picking up this game on Steam for that extra dollar or two that it might cost you when it goes on sale. Even if you're not too big into the story, they would probably do a better job of setting it up and explaining it than I have to you, and the game's atmosphere alone makes it worth playing. It is a beautiful game to actually go through and enjoy. Food, water, atmosphere. So go buy it for like a dollar or two and just give it a playthrough and tell me how you feel. Comment below if you think that you understand the story a little bit better than I do. And you probably do, honestly. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Like I said, I have the flu, so it pro my voice probably doesn't sound as good as it possibly could. And I do apologize for that. I do hope that you hit the bell, subscribe, like the video, share it as much as you possibly can. And I'll see you for the next one, guys. See you as soon as I can. Bye-bye. What's left of me, what's left of me now?